Welcome back to the Active Minds Podcast. I'm Katri L.C. Sarfati, where our goal here is to explore through the experiences and perspectives of people who are paving their own way. Then we get a little bit into how it applies to your life. And last but not least, the whole goal of this entire thing is helping us move smarter together. Today, I'm joined, and uh, I don't want to steal the floor from this one, this one, but I will start with this one. Uh, the topic here we're going to be going over is when the getting gets good, and something that I admire about your perspective and even what you're doing is that you're taking something that is obscure, that is hella convoluted, like people will make it overcomplicated for no reason and very often seems out of touch with how we do business and you're now not only doing it yourself, but you're also putting people through a almost hand-holding process yep. on how to do it yourself. So I'll, I'll let you take the floor, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yeah. how the hell you got here. Yeah. So um, my name is Kevin Jennings, and the program that you were just talking about is um, the Government Cheese. So basically <laughs> what I did, I everybody, it. like, the minute, so people either think the name is great or they're like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But That's how you, I, I can personally tell you I'm on the other side. I'm, I'm like, yes, yeah. fuck yes. Yeah, so the Government Cheese is essentially um, me taking all the experiences and knowledge and everything that I have over the last 14 years of being a government contractor, mm -hmm. packaging it all up, and putting it out to the masses. So like you just said, you know, it's a topic that everyone kind of has heard about, but few people actually understand. Mm -hmm. And then the people that do dive into it, like I say, 60, 70 percent of the people that dive into it to try to learn, mm -hmm. they get out because it's so convoluted. Like you said, like there's yeah. so much going on that they're like, I don't understand what this is. I'm just going to go back to my normal day. Mm -hmm. So what I try to do, like I said, was take all my experiences, package it up into a course-based model, and then I do the one-on-one -on -one teachings and then the group teachings, where I just break down government contracting and make it not hard. Because wow. it truly is not hard, because at the end of the day, it's the government. Like, no matter what anyone can say about any <laughs> form of government, the government is very simple at the root. To you. Because the average person that hears, it, you just said, it's the government. Like, duh. But, it's, but dude, here's you know the thing. People hear that and they're like, no, bro, it's the government. No, the government's <laughs> very simple. Why? Because everything is line itemed out. Everything is ABC123. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you were in the military, right? Yeah. In the military, you had an SOP for everything. Everything. So how was it hard? Because they gave you the guidelines to do everything. I mean, yeah. Out here in the civilian world, there's laws, there's rules. If you go into government and you start working for the government, whether it be you're a school teacher, or a bus driver, a cafeteria lady, a police officer, a fireman, there's rules for everything. So it's the same thing with the, with our side doing work for them. Everything is lined out for us. Like there's no there's no guessing in it. And what I do is basically yeah. take people and show them that there's no guesswork in it. It's not hard. Like I said, what I do is I connect the dots between businesses, business owners and the government. And I do it at every level, whether it be federal, state, or local. Well, two things. One, um, I when I was introduced to not only you, but what you're working on, um, I did actually, the, the first thing out of my mouth when I was, I was like, I saw the videos of you walking these people through it, and what stuck out to me the most was that, you know, you're not just giving this abstract 30,000 foot view thing is, I saw you quite literally like, all right, you're gonna click here, <laughs> you're gonna type this, yeah. you're gonna type that, and you know, what has that experience been like uh, just walking people through this? Like wh what, I won't even go further into that. What, is it, what has it been like? It's amazing for me. Cause honestly, it's, it's always been a passion of mine to help people, but now to be able to help people in something that they thought was truly unimaginable, it's amazing and it feels great for me to be able to do that. And then when I take it a step further and we think, when we think about the financial aspects of it and all that, it's very gratifying because I can take someone who has no business at all mm -hmm. and literally put them in business the next day. Or I can take someone who has a business, they're doing very well, but now I can show them a completely new customer that they never thought would have existed. Like, what's an example of that? Um, for example, I was um, I do my mentor coaching calls these days today, mm -hmm. so I, I've been on, on calls all this morning. So I have one mentee, and they have a, um, a talent company right based out of the northeast mm -hmm. and basically they they manage talent for it companies so she has cisco um nice. processors javascript writers all those different types of people I see and it's going right and so she places them with different it companies mm -hmm. and she's done that for the past 15 years does very well does about six to eight million dollars a year no problem 
we're on a call today and we literally found multiple contracts that she can do single contracts that would equate to what it takes her a year to do in her normal business. Wow. And so those are things to be on a call with somebody like that who is very successful in, in their own right, doing their business, doing great and been doing it for a long time. Just pull that out of the hat almost. And then for to just sit there and go over stuff and be like, cool, we'll go after this, 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 and it's like, wow. Because the thing with government contracting, why it's so great, is in normal business, we're either doing B2C, business to consumer, B2B, business to business, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you go B2G and you start doing business with the government, you're not chasing a customer. See, in our normal business, we're marketing. We have a product that we sell, yeah. and we're marketing, trying to get as many customers to our product as possible. With doing business with the government, the government is our customer. So we don't have to go look for them. We already know who our customer is then our customer is going to tell us the product they want from us. And the price. <laughs> well, so, ballpark. Ballpark, ballpark, right? Ballpark, yeah. So what are you doing? So now imagine if you could take all that money that you were spending on marketing dollars to try to drive people to your to your Google you know, page and drive people to your website, and you're trying to drive all this traffic to you. You could take half of that and literally just reach out to somebody who's already wanting your product. Mm, you heard that, right? You're, it's almost it's it's almost like you're cutting out the middleman. Yeah. Um, it's funny too because as as you're saying that, uh, I don't know if you saw that Facebook. Uh, I call him an ad agency. He's really what the fuck. That's they what are. it is. Yeah. Uh, Apple just said, "Whoops, we're gonna cut you out of there. We're just gonna give Apple users the ability to opt out of things." So now advertising on Facebook has gotten astronomically higher. It's only gonna get worse mm -hmm. um, because they can't track you anymore. They can't see what you're looking at, et cetera. I mean, obviously, they have enough information to keep running for a little bit, but that's not going to last for long. So your approach almost feels recession-proof. It is. You know, people get, like, they always give me backlash when I say it's recession-proof, when I say to some degree it's guaranteed. Yeah. Like, well, how can you say that? And I'm like, I mean, it is. No matter what happens, the government still has to run. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world today. Even if you could think about the worst possible situations for this country, mm -hmm the government still has to run at some capacity. So as long as they're running, I have a job. And Ooh, that's, that's a very good sign. And, that, right and that's what I teach people. As long as the government is operating, there's a job. Like, for example, in my personal business, and that's the difference with me, and not to, like, bash other Internet gurus that do what I do, but I actually have a business that does this. And I – and um, <laughs> Because, you know, a lot of people, they, they read two books or they go on YouTube and all of a sudden, hey, I can teach you how to do this. You can always rent a Lambo, man. Just take pictures. Or you, or, you know? Yeah, right? And so, like, but I actually have a business that does this. So, in my own personal business, the pandemic, that's my business regenerated, like, blew up over the pandemic. And people are like, how? I'm like, listen, I'm in specifically water and sewer, okay? So, what I do for most cities and states is I rehabilitate failing water and sewer infrastructure. Okay, so pandemic hit, right? You think about the average home is built with a certain size pipe. We won't get into the specifics, mm -hmm. right? But when they design a home, when they design an office, when they design anything, they have it based on occupancy, right? So your mm -hmm. average three bedroom, two bath house, 1,500 square feet. When they design the bathroom, they say you're going to have two bathrooms because you're going to have four people living here. They're going to brush their teeth in the morning and night, and they're going to take a shower in the morning and night, and that's the only use for your pipes, right? Yeah. Pandemic hit, everybody's home. So people are going to the bathroom five times a day because normally you only go to the bathroom once or twice and then you go to work. And you go to the yeah. bathroom at work, you go to the bathroom at school, you go to the bathroom at Publix, all that's closed, right? Yeah. So now all changes. of the city infrastructure just went crazy in water and sewer because everybody was home using the bathroom. My business literally blew up. <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended, <laughs> but literally <laughs> blew up because everybody's using the bathroom it's like thanksgiving day for plumbing companies yeah so so that that's a prime example that i tell people is like it doesn't matter what's happened the government still has to operate even during the pandemic the police officers still had to be working mm -hmm. so they still needed supplies firefighters still needed supplies the military was still working mm -hmm. like it, it doesn't matter what happened it is truly recession proof well speaking of uh, we're, uh, we'll get into the, the the fun stuff but one thing that i i heavily and, and i'm rooting for you on this and your students. Um, so there is the term military grade. And having served in the military, I can tell you that military grade quite literally means the cheapest thing that'll it's not make supposed it through. to, <laughs> but yeah. But it's because of the it's because of the characters that are current currently in business. Yeah. And I'm of the belief that if more of you come into the space, 
that now gives them competition to either have to step up or ship out. Correct. So I almost feel, I mean, I'm getting a little dramatic here, but it, the long lasting effects of what you're working on eventually ends up saving my life. Correct. Like, you know, it's it just call it what it is. When it comes to this right here, uh, I'm pretty sure you've been asked this like a million times, man, but how this, why you? So short version of the long story. Mm -hmm. um, I was in real estate in the early 2000s, right? So 2004, I got out of college. I'm 40 years old now. So at the age of, you know, 22, 23, um, out there in the workforce trying to figure it out, excuse me, fresh out of college, I started working construction. Started doing construction. That was cool, but then I got introduced to real estate on the construction site because in the early 2000s, you know, here in Miami, if you had a pulse, you could buy a house and then you could sell it three months Ninja later and make, and, and make $50,000 in no time because yeah. stuff was just crazy, right? So I got into all of that, made a lot of money in real estate in, in my early 20s, but then nobody had ever told me what a recession was. Nobody told me that a bubble could burst or Shit. nobody even really explained what subprime loans were. They were just like, just get this loan. You can sign up for it, right? So um, I lost everything, 2007, 2008. I needed to oh, find sure. something or some way to generate income again. Because I've always been an entrepreneur ever since I was younger. Mm -hmm. So I knew going to go work a regular job, I tried it several times, it never worked for me. Um, so I got introduced to government contracting. And I started off doing simple commodities, selling water, selling trash bags, paper towels, toilet paper, hand sanitizer. And I was doing these little things and then, you know, got back into construction, but doing construction for the government. And then over the past, you know, money in that. yeah, 14 years, it just, it blew up. And like I, I sold a company, started another one, about to sell that one now. And then so now my true passion moving forward is just try to help people and show people how to do it. We did talk previously about PE, yeah. private equity, about that. Um, what are your thoughts on Let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on like private equity jumping into this sector? It's tough. You know, private equity is great. Right. And it, it gives. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, Let me explain why. <laughs> I'm going I'm to say why it sucks, too. But I'm going to tell you why it's great. It's great because it gives some realism or almost I don't know good way to say it, but like you're dealing with a person mm -hmm. and that person might understand your plight and understand your business and they'll take a risk on you. Whereas you may go to a, a traditional bank and you may have this business going, but a traditional bank, if you don't fit within that box, they won't deal with you. Whereas private equity, if they see that you're doing something good mm -hmm. and it's tangible, they'll jump on board. So from that perspective, private equity is good. Private equity is bad because at the end of the day, all they care about is money. So you take somebody who built a business and, you know, they're looking at it for legacy. I want to pass this down to my kids. I'll, private equity don't care. They just want to make the money they want to make, hit their margins, and they on to the next business. So that's why it sucks. As far as getting into my industry, it's tough because you can't massage my industry, right? So, like, if they went and bought, um, like you said, like a landscape company, right, and they had a guy who was doing landscaping and he was doing great numbers. He had a lot of commercial contracts, a lot of houses, residential stuff. Private equity comes in, they dump in marketing dollars, they might expand his fleet, they go do stuff, they can drive business, mm -hmm. right? In government contracting, it doesn't matter what you do, you're not gonna drive business unless you really have some, something substantial that you're bringing to the market. Because mm -hmm. the, government, the government's not just saying, hey, what do you wanna do this week? You know what I'm saying? So it's like the government has to have a need for something. Yeah. And with private equity, sometimes they are impatient because they're like, no, we need to hit these margins by Q4. Like, we don't care what you sure. do, you need to go do this by Q4. And you're like, but we can't. If you don't do this, we're going to bust covenants, and then everything's done. And then you're not going to get this, this, this. And you're like, wait, what? But I can't just go. about the KPI? Yeah, and I'm, and I'm like, I can't create work. You know, and it's like the government <laughs> goes in, 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 in the Pick government is. that guy. Yeah, the government goes in cycles, right? Yeah. Almost in waves. So, and talking KPIs. If they want to see a certain thing on their KPIs, and you're like, well, you're not going to see that this quarter because the government's not spending money. They're like, well, no, we have to hit this number or else we're going to. And you're like, what do you want me to do? Where? How? And it, so that's why I say it doesn't really work in this industry. So it almost feels like it's, at least from what I'm hearing, if a, let's say, nameless PE person or firm or manager were to be more well-versed on what it is your sector looks like, mm -hmm. if they were more educated, 
mm-hmm. they'd probably be a better ally to yeah. how this thing And there works. are, I want to say within my, my industry, there are a few PEs mm-hmm. that were set up for the particular purpose of doing that. Mm-hmm. So they have the understanding. Oh, perfect. But then what happens, just like anybody, there's copycats. So this firm sees this firm's doing this. Now, well, we want to go do it. We're better than them. We got more money than them. But they don't do the education. You know, okay, this is, uh, it's going to sound like kind of intuitive. In my experience working that space, it's it's not the money that matters. Those it's boys not. are different. Like, yeah, like you just said, like, <laughs> I'll have a bigger fund than you. Okay, yeah. fucking good, good yeah, for those you. Those boys are different. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm a little biased because, like, all the time and, like, specifically the startup and tech space, um, it doesn't matter. Like, the size of the fund means nothing, especially if you're, like, a douche, you know? Like there's some people that came here. And I have new neighbors now in Miami that have come from my home, my motherland of New York, and they're walking with this like what they consider big dick energy, but it's just just your douchebag, mm-hmm. you know. And they're they're unfortunately isolating a lot of talent that would normally want to come to them, and bring them opportunities. Speaking of social circles, you know, one thing that uh, that someone would hearing this would immediately go to they're gonna have a lot of questions even before meeting you i asked a few people like what do you want to know a lot of the questions tended to revolve around first of all how the hell do i even learn about this stuff one number two how do i actually meet people who are in this space to learn from them yada 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 so that's the problem with what i do to answer the first question right Mm -hmm. because there's very little education about it. Mm-hmm. I serve two purposes. So I tell people, I first educate before I can teach. So I spend a lot of time, even if people follow me like on Instagram or anywhere else, like I'm educating a lot, mm-hmm. educating people to what's out there, educating to the opportunities, educating you to what it is before I can actually teach you how to do it. Um, as far as meeting people, I will tell you one thing, our phones and social media are amazing for government contracting. And I'll tell you why. It's not so much Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. LinkedIn is an amazing tool. And very few business people in any business, especially in a certain age group, you know, 25 to 35, they're not really paying attention to it. No. But no, every no, no. government employee of a management position has a LinkedIn. And so I can take my phone and I can find anybody and I can connect with them instantly. When I started in this business, um, back in the mid 2000s, I couldn't do that. Mm. Like I would actually have to go find, like I would actually have to door drive knocks. around and door knock wow. with my capability statement and my business cards in my hand. And I would have to go to the VA. I would try, I couldn't. <laughs> so like the problem with that, right? So I could go to like the VA, I could go to city government, but I couldn't go to the DOD. I couldn't go to the Air Force Army. I couldn't just roll up to the Air Force Base and say, hey, I want to know if there's any work available this week. I couldn't go to the Coast Guard. I can do all that. But now I can literally pull up a four-star general on LinkedIn and say, hey, general such and such, I want to do this, this, this. Could you help me? He'll probably say no, but they'll probably say, nah, but you can talk to this person and tell mm-hmm. them I recommended you talk to them. Now you have introductions. So it, it's, it's definitely a lot easier now than it was then, and that's my job is to kind of show people how to do it. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. If you're watching this and enjoying it, press pause for a second. Go to activemindsclub.com. Again, Active Minds club.com here you will have membership access to our exclusive networking events as well as behind the scene access to our guests where you yourself can ask them questions not to mention at these events and in the community you're going to have access to the very mentors that are here sitting with us as well as many many more that are doing cool things in stocks marketing cars real estate where we're going to have you have access to education insights how to's all things that you can apply to your life and business. Were you always able to just go up to anybody and just yeah. have the conversation with them? Mm-hmm. What was that like for you growing up? Was it like, like what was the practice like for you to get to that stage where you just talk to anybody? It took a lot. I mean, you just had to keep doing it. Just, to be honest Were you, with you always extroverted as a kid growing up? I'm Actually, I'm an introvert. I'm very, very introvert, mm-hmm. right? But when I am passionate about something, I could talk for days on it. And when I feel like someone else is passionate about something Mm -hmm. and I can see that in them, I can connect with them. But like, if I could read somebody and I see that they have zero interest in what I'm saying or they don't understand or they're just off in space, like I'll just, I'll cut off. Yeah, ain't no, 
So I'm, I'm very much introvert. And then being, you know, my size doesn't really help with being an extrovert because if I just start running up to people like, hey, what's up? Like, it doesn't really work. <laughs> oh, they would feel like you're there to fuck them up or something? Yeah, they'd be like, yo, what's up? So it just I was always an introvert. But when I'm excited about a topic or if I'm, I'm in a room with individuals that are like-minded, mm -hmm. I take off. That's mm -hmm. when I become, that's when I step out of that shell. So finding, I, I can, so what I'm hearing is, you know, if given the choice, you just, you're totally okay just being chill, <laughs> you know, in the corners, of, but give you a topic that you're enamored with or hella curious about, then just off to the races. Yeah. And how has that translated when it comes to navigating, talking to people? Because like sometimes, you know, you have to have meetings with people yeah. and so on. How does that, how does, how has that affected that dynamic? Um, I mean, for me, it's cool. Cause like once I see that there's nothing there with somebody and I turn off, I'm, I'm checked out. <laughs> But for the most part, to be honest with you, most people that I've come in contact mm -hmm. with lately are genuinely interested about the topic. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I appreciate that, that there's genuine mm -hmm. interest from people about it. And, you know, everybody's motives or interests is different. Yeah. So, you know, like I would say probably like 50% of the people that are interested in the topic are just interested financially which is fine because there is financial stuff to it. But then the other 50% just have general interest because they may have prior knowledge of it. They may have served in the military. They may have, you know, known people within government contracting or in pol um, politics. So they just really just want to understand it. So for me, like, it's been a great experience because nine times out of 10, the people that come to me, they have true, like, they really want to know about it for one of those two reasons. I don't really get too many people that want to talk to me that just want to waste time, which is great. Yeah, but it makes for a great filter. <laughs> which is um, great. You know, I, I'm pretty sure you've seen already the, the shifts in everything from employment to, you know, just great resignations happening. One thing I, I, I'm personally observing right now is that there are people shifting their careers faster and more than ever. And as we speak, I think the average person in their 40s has changed their careers at least five times. Um, first of all, has that been the same for you? Not really. And when it comes to the people that you're helping, the, the students and everyone that's getting something out of learning from you, what do you notice they all have in common? Everybody, and it sounds crazy, and it's not to like put them in a box, but since you asked, I deal with A-type personalities, male and female. A-type? Yeah, I deal oh, with awesome. a, everybody that that is kind of bought the course not so much but like the people that are in like my mentorship and done for you programs mm -hmm. they're all a type personalities they're all like super focused they're like that's a nice filter you got you set up for yourself then and it's not like i did it on purpose no you were just being yourself and that's the thing like and that and that's been my struggle i guess with kind of doing this whole transition to starting to educate and being online a lot mm -hmm. more is i don't really know how to be like the fake un unauthentic self good yeah. You haven't formed any bad habits. Yeah, and so since I'm coming with my true authentic self, yeah. I'm attracting authentic individuals. And that's been a that's been an amazing benefit cuz every person that is involved in any of my programs mm -hmm. that I communicate with, like they're at that same level, which is which is kind of dope for me. It's gratifying. Yeah. Well, that also allows <laughs> you to basically like you when you're curious about something, excited about something, you could do this at 3 a.m., 3 no, p.m. It doesn't matter. I can, I, I, Bali, no, Miami, just, New York, you can just do it all the time. I just go. Well, okay, that is something that um, as you're watching uh, and, and hearing this or taking notes, et cetera, some of the things to extract right now from what he's saying is, yes, government contract might not be your thing, uh, but the, there's some nuggets in there. For example, you got an introvert who once finds something curious or exciting can just keep going, and it's natural. Number two, and I, I, I hope that you run with this, Yes, content and influences and everything are all the rage, but he's actually able to filter through all the muck and the fuss by actually just remaining authentic to himself. So if he curses, he has a lisp. If he, I don't know, slurs his word, he's still doing his own thing. And what's the what's resulting of that is that the people that are coming into his program, not only are they a lot like him, but they're also exactly who he enjoys helping the most. Yep. Um, did I kind of yeah, like understand that correctly? Bro, you hit it on the head. That's oh. 100 percent correct. Awesome. Um, like, so I will get as personal as you want to, but specifically, what is something that you think you would? Hmm, what is something you would like to see more of? One in the podcast space, and two, you're on Instagram more now. Mm -hmm. 
what is missing from those two distribution channels right now, in your opinion? Um, the podcast space is cool. You won't uh, hurt my feelings. Don't worry. I'm no, not like this. That's all right. Sorry. <laughs> um, the podcast space is cool. I'm still learning it. Ditto. So I will say that I'm still learning it. So I'm still learning how all of the, the digital side of things is working. Mm -hmm. um, I'm liking it. I would love to see, and I'm sure it's going to happen, and I'm sure it's in the making, whether it be for Meta or any of those types. Of, but um, true networks and almost channels. Mm -hmm. And I'm, no, I mean, I know they exist. But, like, so if you want to just see, you know, guys stand on top of their Lambo or, in, you know, with half-naked girls on the back of a yacht, here's this channel. This is all yachts and Lambos. That's it. That's the only thing that happens here. Yeah, just and so then it's, and hose network. Yeah, that's it. That's it. This whole network. But kind of like traditional TV, right? So, like, if you want to watch sports, you're going to go to ESPN. Yeah. If you just want to learn about news, you're going to go to CNN, right? So, same thing, but in the podcast land. And I, I know it exists, but it's still very, to me, very, like, uh, it's still growing. Mm. So, like, to see some type of stuff like that to where you can – the educational stuff and then you can dive down because there's a there's a few people that talk about the subject matter I talk about but it would be great to have organization to it to have round tables with five people that do it on a consistent basis and it's like every Tuesday night these five people get together in a real format and talk government contract and talk active awesome. contracts talk things like that you know what I'm saying so that's what I would say as far as that and then like with Instagram it's all fake man like it's all fake I right, listen <laughs> I I've been around, I've only been, I've been on Instagram about two years, right, in total. But I've only been active and influencing for like six months, right? Oh, okay. Well, Literally what? like six months. Uh -huh. And um, I've met a lot of the top influencers, not just here in South Florida, but all over the nation in that six-month span, just based off of proximity. So I've met a lot of them. 70% of them are full of shit. And the only reason I can say that with conviction is because I come to the world different, mm -hmm. right? And so everybody that's in my circle in my normal life is one way. And none of us are involved in social media. None of those people could give it. They don't care about it. So then to come to a world where that's all people care about and then you ask them certain questions like, well, what you doing for this? Or what's up with this? Huh? <laughs> you just get like this blank stare. And I'm like, yo, bro, this is ridiculous. And then I'm like, yo, these people are all fake. Like, none of this is real. Fagazi, Fagazi. Um, that is. Okay, so while that might be the reality, I'll take the approach of looking at it for what it is and not what yeah. I want it to be. Mm -hmm. The silver lining in that is it makes it way more lucrative when you're actually good at what you do. Um, I actually, I, I originally, because I've, I've played with that arena for a while. And after a while, I started meeting more and more and more. Um, I still remember meeting this one influencer. She had like five million, and she was broke. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "What the fuck? How does that even compute?" Because in my brain, like those two should not be it's relatable. The not to cut you off, but the yeah. problem that I found mm -hmm. is that, and and I guess you could look at it two ways, right? So I'm gonna look at the, the glass half full and half empty, right? Mm -hmm. So you have these people; they become influencers, they blow up, they start getting all this recognition and all this following, right? But they're not business people, so they don't tech, they don't effectively know how to monetize their success because they never got into it to really be successful. They just got into it and they became successful. So if they never had any business acumen at all, they're not going to know what to do business wise, right? So then they could look at me and be like, "Yeah, you're a great businessman, but nobody knows who you are," which also is like you're very valid, right? Yeah. So like you know, it's a struggle. It don't matter how much money I got if I go to Komodo on Friday at ten thirty. Like, the guy with the blue check is going to get the table before me. It don't matter that I got 10 times as much money than him. Or even the thing that I found in this whole thing. It doesn't matter if I own the penthouse that he rents. Nobody cares. <laughs> he takes the picture in it. He Not does. me. That's a problem for me. But I'm getting used to it. I'm learning how to, you know, live with it. Because yeah. that's just Miami. And maybe that's just Miami. But I'm sure it happens it's everywhere. I mean, yeah, you've been to L.A. before, right? Yeah, I just left L.A. Yeah, so it's like. That's like the thing, but I mean, I think over time that will all change because I, the one thing I will say for a lot of influencers that I see nowadays is they are getting, there's a lot of them that are about their business. And if they're not, they're meeting individuals that are, that can help them grow. And they're starting to realize that, yeah, and so they're starting to realize that, hey, I can make money 
doing certain things or I can do this or I can do this and then they're starting to put it together. So I think we're getting to a point um, where in the next year, two years, like it's going to shift and it's going to be a lot better because you'll have a lot mer more merging of the worlds mm -hmm. of traditional business people and influencers. So I think it'll all get better. Hey Amen. I'm, I'm, I hope you're right. I hope so. Too. I want you to be right. So bad. Um, when it comes to, you know, obviously these conversations, a central theme tends to come along around, you know, the money and everything. So thank you for being open to talking about obviously other topics and, and subjects as well. When it it's when it's related to like you as a person, um, you know, one of the things that I, I thought was pretty cool is when we first started talking was, you know, at your age right now, not only are you dealing with individuals that are trying out a new phase of their life, but with that also comes the the reality of, OK, I got my business things in order, my business life in order, but my personal life in order mm -hmm. uh, is also now starting to become a priority for a lot of people that you're working with, which includes them looking at you like big bro. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, man, like <laughs> I, I want a, a wife or I want a husband, I want a life, et cetera. What is what are you noticing right now when it comes to the people that are uh, looking to you for not just the business guidance, but the life advice, because you've got years under the belt, which means you've seen a few things, mm -hmm. you've been around the block a time or two. What are you noticing when it comes to the people that are coming to you asking for advice on the personal side? No, a lot of them, they have gotten caught up in the hype, and then it's almost like they're getting to that point where they're burnt out from the hype. And that's, that's a, horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's rough, yeah. Because then it's like, I mean, but it's like anything, right? So I, I look at influence and, and fame just kind of like I look at fortune, right? So, like, you know how you get somebody who gets rich really quick and they end up blowing through a lot of money. Sometimes they go broke or they get close to near broke mm. before they can realize, oh, you know what? I don't really need this like this no more, right? Mm. So I look at the fame part of it, too, and the influence is some of these people blow up so fast and they get all this and they think they want the boats and hoes and then they realize that, damn, I don't really want that. And so I, I look at it the same. So when people come to me for money advice or relationship advice, I kind of look at it the same way. Um, but yeah, I just tell them like, what you want at 25, 35, and 45 are three completely different things, whether you're a man or a woman. So you have to kind of look at what your future self will want. And you gotta try to build a relationship with people. And it's not even just on a physical relationship, even mental relationships, business partners, anything like that, any type of relationship that you're gonna foster, mm -hmm. you need to look at the longevity for it. And you need to, to truly set your expectations based on the, the longevity of that relationship and the potential for it. So mm. if you look at someone and you say, oh, this person just looks great, this is going to be you know, a drunken one night thing, that's fine, but manage those expectations. The same thing with business. Mm -hmm. If you're building a business relationship with somebody and it's truly transactional and you know that, manage that expectation. Manage that expectation with the individual. Like, look, we're gonna make, we're gonna do this deal, we're gonna make this money, but we probably can't do nothing past that point, and that's fine. And so that's why I can always equate the two. That's very true. So with the relationship side and, and building your personal stuff, like, come into it, be real with somebody. Like, look, this is what I'm trying to do. This is where I'm at. If they don't align and their goals don't align with your goals, you shouldn't really be dealing with them. It don't matter how they look, or if you're a woman, it don't matter how much money he got and do all this. If your goals don't align with that person. Don't deal with them because all you're doing is just playing yourself and you're wasting time. And the one thing we can't get back from this world is time. So you got to learn how to use your time to get money. A lot of people get money and then they can't get no more time. Once that happens, it's a wrap. So you got to be you got to be careful with your time and your energy and how you invest that time into other individuals. I keep thinking this one phrase in my brain over and over as you're saying that, which is uh Cuentas claras, amistades largas. Uh, clear accounts lead to long friendships. So I definitely appreciate your approach to not only how you what you share with the people that you help, but your approach to life is seems pretty. Let's call it no bullshit. Yeah, all um, the time. Showing up that way almost um, <laughs> saves you from having to deal with having to worry about how to finesse this or how to maneuver that. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that the people you're sharing that with are taking your advice and practicing it. Mm -hmm. mm. Damn, that's pretty fucking awesome, dude. I, I got to give you a huge kudos on that one. Uh, <laughs> cool. No, I, I appreciate the no fluff part. Um, you know, I, I understand that entertainment rules, uh, social media, I'm, I'm partially guilty. Yeah, we um, all are. Your, your partner shot me a, uh, like ah, earlier because I jokingly, you know, was admitted that why social media, for example, gets so 
addicting, mm -hmm. you know, in part is, sorry, <laughs> the fault of, of people like myself being growth hacker, et cetera. But no, so, so hearing that is just awesome. It, it almost gives me hope for the other side. Yeah. Um, when it so sorry as I, I got a little sidetracked there but <laughs> nah, that's, cool. that's what we're doing it for that's what i do it for that's what i like i appreciate conversations like this that get real that yeah. get sidetracked that get off topic but we're talking about real stuff that can really help people elevate like nah this so. is refreshing i love this i love this i do that's cool because usually they have to be like what do you think and you know, <laughs> spell it out <laughs> but no you're, you're just like it's just right to the chase i fucking love it i'm you're spoiling me a little bit right now yeah my bad. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly fairly new to this uh and my motivator for this is always uh every single time i'm doing this is every time i'm sitting down is always like okay what would if, what if i were the one watching this what would i love to ask this guy uh i do tend to put it in like my instagram or socials like you know this is the person i'm talking to what do you think what do you see what do you want to know um, so a lot of the questions that I got when it came to you, uh, definitely were revolving around. I think you're, I think you're like resonating that through your message because a lot of the messages were basically like, this guy just seems like he's there to help me. He, this guy is just like no fluff. I, I got that one a lot, by the way, no fluff. Um, another question, well, no, no, a question that I got was revolving around, you know, with politics happening mm -hmm. and all this other stuff happening. Uh, what are what is navigating that landscape require out of you? Like, have you had to change your perspective on things? You know, what what is it like being you in a space that is so heavily regulated? There's always like SOPs to everything. Nah, you just it's like anything. You learn the game, mm -hmm. and the same thing. Manage expectations. Like I know the evil that I deal with every day. And so I manage my expectations when I deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I play the game. I know the rules to the game and I play it. I don't really let it affect me too much. I don't let politics affect me at all. I don't talk politics with people. I tell people all the time, it really doesn't matter what I think because they're going to pay me regardless. So, you know what I'm saying? So I just keep it there. <laughs> not um, my monkeys, not my circus. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then like I tell people too, like it, it doesn't matter who's in office. Like I said, they're going to pay me. But in, a, in as an addition to that, like, not that I know too much, but I almost know too much because I deal with it. So I'm, I'm constantly abreast of what's going on at every level of politics, at the city level, state level, or federal level, because I have to follow the money. So I want to know if someone new is coming in, what type of policies are they going to enact? Where are they writing stuff? What bills are being put in play? Mm -hmm. Where's the money being spent? How's Congress spending the budget for the next fiscal year? What departments are going to get more money than those? What departments are going to get cut? You know, where is funding being going? So I became a nerd of it, of the game, mm -hmm. and so I don't let it affect me. Hmm. I was talking to someone earlier. The topic of business owner and entrepreneur came up. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was talking to him, uh, the first thing I honed, on, honed in on is there has been a bad effect of how entrepreneur has been used, kind of like we've bastardized the word love and friend. Hmm. We're just throwing it around now. Um, hmm. Entrepreneurs not only are they constantly solving problems, because in fact the the business itself is a, a solution to a problem, but their entire actions, not just perspective, because we could talk mindset all day, but motivation is perishable, right? The way that you constantly react to things is always like there's a problem to solve, a long-term problem to solve, which means I need to kind of work backwards. Mm -hmm. What's your process like when it comes to you're an entrepreneur, you're constantly solving problems? Yeah, I'm not a business owner. Exactly. What is your problem? What does your problem solving look like? So I, I always I reverse engineer every situation and you start at the end. I start. the end. It don't matter what it is. I reverse engineer everything. Mm. Like when we do our business planning, for our now. businesses, we literally go like, what is the goal? Where are we trying to get to? Mm -hmm. And then we reverse engineer it. Did you serve? Huh? No. Nah. OK, sorry. I just, just had to ask. Yeah. That sounds very like you start at the end. Yeah, but I. It just, I don't know, it's just how I've been. You always start at the end. You always start with the goal in mind and then work backwards. And so when you do that, it makes it a lot easier because you know where you want to get to. So all you have to do is stay focused on that and then you're laying out the steps to get to it. So as long as you make progress every day mm -hmm. to achieve one of those goals and, and make one of those steps, you're going to get to the end. The problem with today's society is they want to jump straight to the end. So people get into this and they don't care about it. They just want to go straight to him. Like, no, there's a process. You got to learn to enjoy the process. Mm. 
And that's what I tell my I business owners. to enjoy the process. Yeah. That's so, the nugget right there. So one thing that I'm doing with a lot of my, um, my, my higher ticket clients, my mentorship and done for you clients right now, is teaching them how to scale for sale. So I'm, I'm, they're coming in. I'm like, listen, I'm going to show you. got a little marketer in you there. Yeah. I like government cheese. Yeah, scale, <laughs> scale. The sale. So it's like, I tell them, I'm like, what are you really, what are you doing this for? What, why do you, why do you do this? What do you want from this? Are you building a legacy? Are you, do you want to have a business that, you know, you can, you're going to pass down to your kids. You're going to pass down to your kids. You name lives forever. It's fine. Then we'll work towards that. Mm-hmm. Right now, everybody, I just want to get rich. Okay. What is your rich? Cause I hate when people tell me I want to be rich. What does that mean? Like, I, I don't, I don't understand what that is. It's different everywhere. It's, it's subjective. It's subjective. Like, yeah. so if you tell me you want to be rich, I'm like, okay, so everybody want to be rich. So it's like going through those steps, telling me what that end goal is. Is it, you know, do you want to sell your business for 10 million, 20 million, 30 million? What do you want to do? Because then once we got that number, all right, cool. Now I'm going to show you how to get to it. Mm. And that's why I love government contracting and I'm passionate about it. If someone comes to me today that I don't know from Adam and they tell me, Kevin, I want to have, I want to sell my business for $10 million. Then I say, perfect. To sell it for $10 million, it's going to take three to five years. Of those three to five years, you're zero to two. We're going to build your business. Two to three, we're going to grow your business. And you're three to five, we're going to organize it. We're going to hone in on your business and we're going to put all the systems and processes in place. We're going to market your business in year five. For you to get $10 million at a three times multiple, that means I need to grow your business to somewhere around three to $4 million a year. And we got five years to do it. Here's the government forecast for the next two years. I want you to go pick three pro- contracts a quarter. Each one of those contracts needs to be 500 to a million dollars. Boom, I just sold your business for $10 million. Have a nice day. That's it. It's very simple. I started at the 10 million, I worked it backwards. It's Keep it not simple, hard. Stupid. Keep it simple. Like <laughs> this shit is not hard. The problem is people make it hard because they feel like it can't be that simple. Where's the catch? Oh, that's so boring, dude. Yeah, so that's also the same <laughs> crowd that's like, it's a scam. It's a scam. Okay, yeah, oh, no, it's a God. scam because you've told yourself it's a scam and you're too fucking lazy to do any work. So now, okay, cool, it's a scam. Next. <laughs> like, move on to the next scam and tell somebody else that their thing is a scam. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Like, it, I work with people that want to work. That's why you get those A-types. That's why if you don't want to work, don't call me because not only are you wasting your time, you're wasting my time. And when you waste my time, I can't get that back. And I can't pour that time into somebody else who (laughs) wanted it personally. I take that. (laughs) You look like you had a visceral reaction just now. I tell my I own a construction company. Right. So it's no like mystery, like construction workers are construction workers. Right. They're just they're they're who they are. Mm -hmm. So I have to tell my guys all the time. Look, bro, don't fuck up my money. If you want to show up on Monday hungover and sleep in the truck for two hours, just don't come. You could fuck up your money and not get paid for the day. But if you come here and you're a piece of shit, you just fucked up my money. I, I don't like that. Yeah. So it's the same way now in this business. Yeah, don't don't waste my time. If yeah. you want to waste your time, that's cool. But when you bring your problems to me, now you're affecting me. And then the bigger issue with that that I have is now I can't give that time to somebody else who really deserves it. And that's not fair to that person. That's a good way to look at it, man. I mean, I'm, I'm a little biased when I say that subjectively. I, I definitely get, I have seen the benefits of that perspective. Yeah. Um, and the, the one of them is that the teams that I've been lucky and fortunate enough to build uh, are impressive as fuck. You know, like those, that that's how you end up with those people. Yeah. Like, holy fuck, like just make me feel dumb and I like it. Like you're so much better at X Y Z than I am, so I, I I can almost I can see why you continue to. Bro, I got that students way. that are way better than me. I got students. I tell them it's you guys. Make <laughs> you students. feel dumb. Bro, I got students that are way better than oh, that's me. That's awesome, dude. God and bless. I love it because if they're that much better than me, but they know a little bit less than me, imagine where they're gonna be after they oh, after yeah. they leave their interactions with me. Absolutely. So as we're wrapping up, I wanted to touch on a few points. So uh, I say this a number of times. If you're watching, listening, want to rewind, here are some of the finer points for you to focus on when it comes to this conversation. Uh, We started off with government contracts. Is it sexy? Depends on who you ask. But to the average person, it's not sexy because it seems so complicated. So his approach is very grounded in first principles theory and reverse engineering. He's seeing something and immediately wants to know, well, first of all, how does it work? 
who does it require to keep running and how do I fit in there? When it comes to the reverse engineering part is he likes to start at the end. And we did go over that a little bit later, but in the beginning he immediately went for that. It's like the end is this. Now I have to set up KPIs, key performance indicators, also known as milestones. Then he started getting into not only is that reverse engineering is important, but it's like, okay, what kind of personality and person does it require? Well, let's be honest with ourselves. It requires a little bit of ego death. Yes, I know that your friends might tell you everything's a scam. Maybe you, even you find yourself thinking everything <laughs> is a scam. But I mean, come on, have you, haven't you ever met like a confident idiot who's rich? Guess what that person's superpower is? They're okay with falling on their face and failing a few times. You care too much. Yep. So let's keep that in mind. Then we started getting into how you do anything is how you do everything. And his approach to life is almost identical to his approach with his personal life. So business and personal is way more related than you realize. If you suck at your job, you probably suck at home too. You could take that personally, but you're going to get over it. At the end of the day, people like people like that join these conversations all have one thing in common multiples but one particular thing is that they always want to focus on where they fit into the problem you know as and, and we got into another fine point which was what is the difference between a business owner and an entrepreneur it's okay i'm here to solve a problem and then another problem and then another problem and every time the problem gets harder the paycheck gets fatter uh, I hope I'm digesting the way what you're saying the way you're saying it. I put that out there. That was perfect. <laughs> All right, I just wanted to make sure that I'm listening. I couldn't do that no better. That was perfect. Um, so as we as we as we wrap up, uh, I'd love to invite you to share something that in the last year has happened or you've accomplished that you are the most proud of. Um, honestly, the thing I'm most proud of is just putting together the government cheese. That's been that's been something like it was it's almost one of those things that was in the back of my mind. Like I would love to one day be able to do this, 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 but yeah. to actually put it together and do it. I'm most proud of and and not so much because it, it helps me, but the way it helps others, because I tell people, even if you like my program, yeah, it's based around government contracting. But at the end of it, the root of it is just to help people be better people, because it's just like you just said, if you suck at business, you probably suck at your life. So I tell people all the time when they come to my program, no matter what you do in business, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put you in front of the be the biggest and largest customer in the world. So that way, if you are on par to do business with them, when you go back down, you're gonna be amazing. You're like Michael Jordan to the yep. average person. And so that's that's at the heart of what my program is. Is that is I'm trying to create better business people mm. by utilizing government contracting. Well, I'm rooting for you because I just told you, military grade, I feel like oh, your yeah, students yeah, are going to yeah. redefine yeah, no, what military grade yeah, means. Yeah, for sure. um, so, dude, thank you so much for uh, stopping by. Thanks for having You've, me. You've uh, dropped you a guys. lot of fucking knowledge on us, and I really appreciate you dropping by and, and having the openness to get into a little bit more than usual. Um, as we wrap up, man, is there like one or two questions in the back of your brain that you might have uh, for me on my end? No, I, I just, once again, I want to say thanks. I appreciate you having me. I right. appreciate the candid conversation we're able to have. A lot of people don't like to talk like that. Hey, that's <laughs> a, I, I'm enjoying this part so far because I get to meet people like you. So yeah. hell yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So as we wrap up, I, I know I've said this before, uh, but when the getting, why I went with the when the going, the getting gets going. Um, the whole process of like we've talked about flow state here before. We've talked yeah. about mental models. We talked about all this stuff, but specifically when it comes to the how because it looks so simple it constantly comes back to what is it that i'm missing what's the catch and i hope that by this episode you're starting to notice a theme you're starting to notice the teamwork the problem solving the perspective of how do i affect change and the fourth another thing that i hope that you're picking up from all of these conversations is the fact that the bigger the problem the fatter the paycheck and last but not least Perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. I bet you that out. I, you know, I fucked that up at the beginning. Um, so yes, baby steps is sounds easy, right? But until you start doing it, you're gonna fail a few times. Let's call it tuition. 
Mm-hmm. Consider that. Yep. So as we wrap up, I want to he- give a huge thanks to Vegan Gummies and Hands Free Automation. They've been awesome, not only friends, sponsors, as well as partners in keeping this machine running. I've been Catriel C. Sarfati. I'll see you in the next one. So guys, as we're wrapping up, we want to remind you that we have our membership program now available on ActiveMindsClub.com. ActiveMindsClub.com. Grab yourself a seat. See you there.